Welcome to Kiss the Reviews. I'm Armando. That's Corey. And today we are doing 1982's Poltergeist. Can I tell you though, before we get started, uh, like into the minutia of the whole movie? <clears throat> yes. I was, let's say, flabbergasted, perhaps even thunderstruck, oh. that the priest or the preacher guy was not in this movie. <laughs> really? You didn't know? I, dude, I would have bet a lot, well, not a lot of money, but all of my money, that he he was in this movie. He's my favorite part of this series I discovered last night. Yes. And he wasn't in the movie. No, he doesn't pop up until part two. Yeah. And I would have won $4 on that bet. So, yep. <laughs> so. hey, hey. I got those JFK commemorative stamps, asshole. Those are worth a good 24, 25 bucks now. Exactly. So before we get into it, if you want to reach out to Corey or I on Twitter, you can reach out to me at Junior D's. You can reach out to Corey at Idle Poncho. And let's get into 1982's Poltergeist, starring Craig T. Nelson, the coach, as Steve Freeling. Joe Beth Williams as Diane Freeling, Heather O'Rourke as Carol Ann Freeling, Zelda Rubenstein as Tangina. I have to ask you, is she a charlatan? I don't, personally, I don't think uh, Tangina's a charlatan. Okay. Just because of a few things that happen right at the beginning when she comes in. Sure, um, and I'll, I'll save my uh, uh, evidence or why I am accusing her of being such a horrible thing. <clears throat> I'll, I'll say that all until the end. What I really like about this movie is shit starts right away. Yeah, like, I didn't know it jumped off that quickly. Yeah, like the it, opening it, effing scene. Yeah, it it really does. And what's awesome about it is most horror movies that you get into – it's you get at least 20 to 30 minutes of maybe like one or two minor things happen, but it's like happy family. We're having a catch in the backyard. Yeah. And then Satan shows up and starts fucking shit up. This like it starts from the very beginning from the again, from the opening scene and Carol Ann's talking to the TV and doing all the to the snow. Remember TV snow? At like yeah, midnight? Well, <laughs> what's funny is I was watching this uh, with a special lady friend. And she she hears the Star Spangled Banner. And she goes, look, is that really how they're, the, the song they're using to open the movie with? And I said, no. This is how TV used to end. TV I, used to stop at a point I, in time at night. I forgot that that's how it opened. So I had the same thought. I was like, why are they playing the Star Spit? Oh, Okay. Totally forgot about the him falling asleep in front of the TV and Carol Ann coming down. And by the way, they need to uh, crate their dog because their dog is like ru just running around the house randomly, just eating shit all over the place. And yeah, that's the dog's that's why. An asshole. <laughs> so, but shit. And so they, make, they also make Craig T. Nelson in this first scene almost set up like a real kind of white trashy type dad. Like, he's yeah. just passed out in the recliner, mm -hmm. just fucking half his gut sticking out. Before you even realize he's successful, yeah. he then has his friends over and gets into a pissing contest with his neighbor on uh, Football Sunday. Yeah, about the remote control. Yeah. Because that was, that was back in the day, and again, where if you had one ro remote control and the other person had the same TV, there was no, like, you can't control, no, you controlled each other's TVs. <laughs> We've yeah, actually, we, we actually did that as a kid. Really? <laughs> yeah. You could just go to like people's houses and. Oh my gosh. No, I grew up with money. All... So I didn't know that. <laughs> they all, it's uh they all worked on like the same wavelength or something because. Oh my gosh. No, yeah, that one was, was, I was like, did that shit really happen? Yeah. So... We don't do that affluent neighborhood. <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> And then their pet bird dies. And mom tries to flush it down the toilet? I know this is built on, like, you know, a, a graveyard, basically. But it also has very strong plumbing. If you could flush a fucking bird down the toilet. Yeah, those people are shitting bricks for even thinking you could flush <laughs> a bird down the toilet. So, later that night, 
she wakes up because the kids are in bed with the parents. She wakes up, goes to the TV, and this is where you get like the ghostly hand that comes out of the TV. It almost reminded me of remember like the old Warner Brother cartoons where like the the hand would come off of the pie and like yeah. grab you under the nose. <laughs> Like, yeah. that's what that reminded me of. And I was actually surprised, again, for 1982, mm-hmm. the majority, and I would say 98% of the effects in this movie were fantastic. They were done so well. There was, yes. like, one or two that you were like, ugh. But other than that, like, this coming out of the TV was great. Like, all, like, the ghosts were really cool. But, again, she starts talking to the TV. The hand comes out and enters the wall of their house and causes the whole family to think that there's an earthquake. Nobody else felt the earthquake except for them. Carol Ann gives the, you know, the famous line. They're here. The next morning at breakfast, the mom keeps pressing her for like, what did you mean? And she says the TV people. And she's like, oh shit. This is when all the chairs start moving in the kitchen. Like she puts them all back and then they're stacked on top of each other. And and then they find out, the, the mom at least finds out that you can slide across the table and it feels like something's tickling you and pulling you. And immediately, like the husband, Craig T. Nelson, is sitting down at the end of this after he sees it and he's just like, oh shit, like something something's going on. Right, and, and then, she's cheering it like it's fucking nuts. And this exactly. is enter the classic everybody's joke, best race joke ever. Fucking white people. <laughs> you got ghosts in your house, dude. Why don't white people just leave the house when there's a ghost in the house? After this, during a thunderstorm, the tree outside, which I don't know why they haven't chopped this tree down before, it's got no branches or leaves or it's just like the trunk. And a couple of giant branches coming off. It's dead. <laughs> you say a couple of giant branches coming off of it. It's got like six faces in it. <laughs> and it's not like, oh, that's a weird looking knot. It kind of looks peculiar. Almost face-like. Dude, that's a fucking face. There are eye holes and a nose and shit. Yeah. The tree breaks through the, the windows. And again, really early crazy shit. Like real crazy shit's happening. It breaks through the window it takes Robbie and takes him outside. Everybody goes outside to save Robbie. They forget about Carol Ann. And when they come back in the house, Carol Ann, is she gone? So, well, And we say everybody goes outside to save Robbie, which kind of is true. But really, Dad's the only one that leaps into action here. Like, he starts yeah. climbing the fucking tree like he's Curious yes. George. <laughs> and is literally pulling his fucking son out of this evil dead tree. Uh, uh, like JBW and uh, the older daughter, they don't need to be there. No, they don't do anything. They're just like, mm, help Robbie. Like, fuck, I'm trying. That's yeah. not help. That's not constructive criticism. <laughs> well, and I'm they, trying. and they're like, Oh, we forgot Carol Ann in the house. So they go back in. They can't find her. They think she's in the closet. She's not. It's the little creepy clown, which, okay, PSA. I know it was the 80s. I know there was a lot of creepy toys back then. and But but this clown serves no purpose in that house. I don't know if when Robbie was a little kid he would play with it, but that shit's creepy as hell. He scared the hell. Like, he, he can't go to sleep because this clown's staring at him from the chair. Just throw it away. There's no context as to why that clown is so important that it has to sit and face Robbie yes. the entire time. Yeah, and if you notice, if I remember correctly, right before Robbie gets eaten by the tree, yeah, the clown. It's like one of the few times you don't see the clown sitting on that chair. It's actually sitting right behind Carol Ann. I thought that was a neat little uh, add-in they did. She gets sucked into the closet into this other dimension, and. They can't find Carol Ann. They're running all over the house. They, they they search everywhere, including the pit in the new swimming pool that is that takes forever to get built, by the way. They're so worried about this new swimming pool, and they barely have, like, a trench dug out. Yeah. The swimming pool is about as big as a kitchen table. Yeah. And they're just like, <laughs> fuck it. There's just, like, one so, little slide left to it. Well, and then Robbie hears Carol Ann calling from the TV. Now, Steven Spielberg uh, did Robbie a disservice here. 
the side view with the TV in the back and the mom and Robbie yeah. was was not a good look. This should have hit the cutting room floor because all I thought was brush up, brush up, brush up. he's at the age where his teeth, his head like his head hasn't grown into his teeth yet. We yeah. were all at that age. Mm. But man, when there's snow TV behind you and it's a side shot, all I saw was teeth. That's all I saw. Jesus Christ. I, I immediately started laughing and I felt bad because I was like, Ugh. Yeah, fuck you, 12-year-old boy. <laughs> well, he's like 50 now, so I guess it's cool. Hopefully he grew into those teeth. <laughs> Steve goes and meets then with the parapsychologists, Dr. Lash, Ryan, and Marty, to help him find Carol Ann. They get to the house, and they are freaked out immediately. There's, like, toys and shit flying around. Oh, dude. And this was, again, set up so well, because this is yeah. when uh, the dude running the camera, he's like, oh, we recorded some spectacular events. Like, over 17 hours, over 24 hours, we <laughs> yeah. got this time-lapse video of a cup moving, like, two feet. You can't see it with the naked eye. It's astounding footage. And then yes. they open up Carol Ann and Robbie's room. And holy shit. Yeah, there's there's shit flying, there's toys flying around, the lamp, uh like disembodied voices like giggling and shit. Bill in there. Bill Paxton is flying around in there. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking A. Oh. This is the part of the movie where I was like, apparently the I don't know what Marty did, but the ghosts fucking hate Marty. Like they fuck with him from the stake. Going across, and okay, you're a guest in somebody's house. You're doing like paranormal. He's going through the fridge. He's just grabbing chicken and ste you're going to cook a steak? I've known you for over two decades, and I still feel awkward going through your refrigerator. <laughs> just doesn't even ask, going through the thing. But the steak starts to, that's a great scene where it crawls across the, the counter and all the shit's coming out of it, maggots on the chicken. I actually liked uh, this actor's role better when he played Michael Bolton in Office Space. <laughs> well, they, they you have uh, Michael Bolton from Office Space, but Ray Parker Jr., is he the other guy? <laughs> I'm afraid of no ghosts. The most ragtag set of Ghostbusters you've ever seen. So... They keep fucking with Marty, the steak, the chicken, his his face when he peels his face off. Now, for practical effects, this is terrible. But it's still a good, like, I still liked the scene. It made me laugh because of how they shot that. Because everything else was so good. You were correct. It's fact. Everything else was so good and this was, like, so epically bad. Yeah, this was a rough one. Uh, the yeah. one shot I did like is when they kept cutting to the sink and the yes. clumps falling into the sink. Yeah. That was fucking gross. Yes. And then every time they flash back to his face, it was just like, oh, yeah, it's not really happening. Yeah. It's fine. Exactly. Uh, the other thing was, I don't know if you've noticed this through the effects in this movie or not, but Steven Spielberg was in such a pocket between this and Raiders of the Lost Ark as far as his effects were concerned. I mean, yeah. it's basically the same shit. Yeah. And I know, you know, roughly same time period, same era of effects. You can only go so far. That really took a lot of, uh, I think, the scare out of some of, like, the hand coming out. It looked like every ghost in this movie looked like the ghosts in Raiders of the Lost Ark. At that's the end. fair. I mean, that's, that, that's fair. Um... Still scared the shit out of me when I was a kid. Oh, when I was so. when I was a kid, no <laughs> doubt. This is like I three drops of pee out of the. Uh, <laughs> scale. Steven then meets with his boss, talks to his boss Teague about a new how a new housing project going up. Teague reveals that the company's built over cemeteries in the past, including. Yep this community but i like how too uh his boss says here that you know ah it's not sacrilegious it's not some ancient tribal burial ground or anything motherfucker what tribe do you belong to where that's the only idea of sacrilegious <laughs> to you 
Are you a practicing Navajo? Get the fuck out of here with your bullshit. Steven's still like, dude, whatever. I got like ghosts and shit in my house. Leave me the fuck alone. He looks like hell. Like so his boss is the worst businessman in the world. What do you say on this show all the time? Read the fucking room. Well, You're, the boss dude is acting like he's like, uh, this is a power play. Like I've got leverage and I'm going to go to another firm. And that's yes. why he's like, this could be your bay window and your wonderful view. Look at him, dude. He looks like well, shit. The minute he opens the door, when his boss gets there, he literally looks like he got ran over by a truck. His shirt's half untucked. He's got the five o'clock shadow. Oh. He's like sweaty. He's been Look wearing the, the same. <laughs> the bags under his eyes. He looks like the fucking crib keeper. Yeah. And he's like, that's cool. If you're sick and you got the flu, come on with me. I got to show you something. <laughs> like, yeah. Bro, settle down. The parapsychologists had left because they needed to get yeah. more help. So yes. they come back. They bring uh, the medium, Tangina. She brings this whole movie together. She's serious, but yet she's super sarcastic. Yep. She and does the she does a phenomenal job with this role. Oh, dude, this is this is what Jeepers Creepers had tried to do with Madame Exposition. Yes, and just failed miserably. Yes. Yep, and and, and, the, and it was all in the dialogue. It's that's no, all. It, the, it's the only difference between the it two was, dialogue. Well, it was the dialogue and the way she delivers it all is yes. phenomenal. Oh, yeah. And there's the one scene where this is where Steven's like, did this really? So yeah. he just starts thinking of stuff to see if she can read his mind. Mm -hmm. And she she delivers the line from the top of the stairs. I just don't like trick answers. She tells them that the spirits are stuck between dimensions Carol Ann was born in the house. She has the strongest connection to it. And her life force is so bright that it's distracting and confuses the spirits. And they think she's the light that they have to go to. So they're following her. And that's why they're keeping her there. She is a living presence in their spiritual earthbound plane. Tangina also warns everyone that there is like this malevolent spirit Yep. In the house or in the other dimension. It says things only a child can understand. It has been using her to restrain the others. She only sees it as another kid, so they're chilling. Yes. This is where I started to get a little bit confused. And I know, like, in these movies, you can't dive too deep into the monster background. Because it's just a fucking mess in every movie. It always is. Yeah, yeah. However... I got confused by the whole don't run into the light, go into the light thing. Yes. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the the first parapsychologist comes in, the lush, you know, the drinking problem. Yeah. Uh, she comes in and she's like, tell her not to go into the light. She does not want to go into the light. Avoid yeah. the fucking light. And then Tangina comes in and is like, yo, tell that little bitch to go into the light. Everything will be cool. So this is this is what I this is what I got from it. She was telling her to go into the light. And again, if I'm wrong, comment below. The what I took from that was she is going to the light to lead those other people into the light. So she's just gonna stop and then be like, I'm and gonna then, hold the door open for you. Chivalry yeah. is not after exactly. You. And then that's when they were going to pull her out. A similar story happened to a teacher in the Florida area. Tangina then tests the portal with the tennis balls and they find the exit below the closet in the family room. Dude, I would be super pissed if I'm Ray Parker Jr. catching these ectoplasm balls. <laughs> and he's like, snip. This is the one part where I just fucking, I lost it. Because he catches <laughs> the first tennis ball, right? And he rubs it off and he sniffs it. And then he goes, I can see the number one. That's my ball. You didn't look at anything. You sniffed it. It uh, smells like a one. I know. That's my marker. I used, I used I was, the cherry flavored marker. I'm not going to go. lie. I, I might have done one of these. It looked, <laughs> it looked, it looked like strawberry, strawberry jelly. It looked delicious. I assure <laughs> you, it was not. No. It, no, it was not. It's, if you ever run into ectoplasm, don't eat it. That was a 
That was a ghost. This, this ectoplasm. They devise a plan to tie a long rope around Diane so she can go in, grab Carol Ann, and then exit through the other side. Tan, this is when Tangina coaxes the spirits away from Carol Ann to the real light. Steve panics at this point because he was basically said what you said. It was like, I thought you said not to go into the light. I'm so confused. I'm just pulling now. And then you get the effect of the monster head coming through, basically yes. the beast coming through the closet and just yeah, just telling him like, hey, what's up, guy? And then Steve shits his pants. <laughs> Diane falls through the living room ceiling with Carol Ann. They crash to the floor. Bro, yeah. there's some broken ribs and possible concussions for both of them on this. Oh, at the least. That was, was a hard fall. Like, if Ray Parker Jr. was supposed to catch them, he was like, fuck that shit. I ain't afraid of no ghost. So they, they throw the tennis balls through, right? And they're like, mm. oh, pew, pew. oh, one and a two. These are our tennis balls. Yay. Sniff, sniff, whatever. So you know that if they go into that, they're coming through the ceiling. Wouldn't you put a mattress down? Like, just Something, in case? Something, yes. Like, we're either, one of two things is going to happen, but we need to prepare for everything. We're either going to pull them out through the closet, or they're going to fall through onto the floor. Maybe we should put a mattress or, I don't know, some fucking pillows, uh, one of those mats you see in the gymnasium. <laughs> like, Dude, I don't think they were, uh, the, I don't think the paranormal team quite had the budget for that, because... <laughs> Their plan to thwart the poltergeist and retrieve the human child yeah. is a rope and tennis balls. Wow. They went to Home Depot. We're like, rope? Sure. Grab that rope. Uh, do they have tennis balls here? Yeah, I think they got tennis balls. Let's just go grab the tennis balls. We're good I, to go. I, hold two. I don't want a whole tube. I just want two. Can I get two? <laughs> can, can, you keep the, balls off part? can you keep the receipt? I got to put in my expenses. <laughs> Okay, it can't be more than 20 bucks. That's right. So they get them, pick them up, bring them into the the bathtub to, I guess, wash them off. It was weird. When they set them in the bathtub, it sounded like it sizzled. Yeah. But then I, but then I realized it wasn't that. Somebody made them a bubble bath. Yeah, there was, there was soap. He's wiping soap. them off and there's like bubbles everywhere. And yeah. I don't mean like, you know, like, oh, it's boiling water. I mean like Mr. Fucking Bubbles was poured into the bath water. <laughs> so they get they get cleaned up. They wake up. And basically everybody leaves. And what I really liked about this, and as much as people may have made fun of since then and, and in the 80s about these white people. and Very simple. It's a ghost in the house. Get the fuck out. Literally, after they get Carol Ann back, they're like, bro. We're out of here. Eh, 50-50 on that. Uh, I, I, however, I got to go back uh, real quick because this is another place uh, where Angina, I think, was a charlatan. Did you call, because, her, Ange did you call her Angina? Yes, okay. Because <laughs> she might be a charlatan until, uh, until she uh, proves otherwise she doesn't get my full respect. But after they get Carol Ann back, right, she primps her hair, right? Yep. And she looks at the camera and says, This house is clean. Nothing is clean about this house. So why would she do that? If she should know. Unless she wasn't putting on a little bit of a show. Well, she is putting on a little bit of a show, which I actually kind of like. I like the whole, like, fixing her hair right before she looks in the camera and she gives, like, the whole... Well, yeah, this house is clean. It, like she's, so she's like, awesome. I'm, I'm ready, Mister Deville, for my close up. Like, if she actually cleaned the house, that's awesome. Yeah. she put a little attitude on it. Yeah, but I think she felt that the house was clean at that point because she couldn't feel any of the other spirits. There's 178 ghosts walking around this fucking house. I'm just saying. I'm not one. I'm not. I'm not sticking up for her, but like. Everything dis everything disappears, <laughs> like even like right after that, and then you know, Robbie and the the daughter come back at the end because they think because nothing's happening in the house, so everything is kind of subsided. So she doesn't feel anything, and they think, oh, dope. But again, going going back to to earlier, 
I really like this because they're like, we're getting the fuck out of here. We're packing our yes. shit and we're moving. Great choice. And again, it starts off that way. But it's yes. like, hey, we've had an incident free morning. Let's just spend one more night because dad had to go to the office to pick up a few things. Yes. And he'll be right back. But he was insistent. We are staying the night at this hotel. That dude left at fucking noon. Yes. And he didn't he did. get back until well after. The kids have showered and been put to bed. Which, yes. by the way, how are you moving without the kids' beds, bro? <laughs> you filled up an entire fucking moving van and you didn't pack anybody's beds? You were right. Even if you're going to keep the beds because you're going to stay for one more night, maybe you pack the beds the next morning. I'm not, you know, giving excuses for them, but maybe that was the thought behind it. Either way, how about this for a plan? You know what? Let's go ahead and stay in the family room. Everybody sleep together so that what happens after this doesn't fucking happen. Because the kids get showered and, you know, they take their bath and then they go to bed. The mom gets the shower apparently under a heating lamp that they have in the bed in the bathroom. Cool. She gets ready. She's, you know, relaxing on the bed. And then all of a sudden shit starts breaking loose. She yeah. gets sucked onto the wall. The kids are getting sucked into a vagina in the closet now. The closet has all of a sudden turned into a vagina that sucks the kids in. I dug the closet earlier in the movie. It was just a light and it sucked you in and you were done. Yeah. Um, the whole vagina thing kind of threw me for <laughs> for a loop here. I was like, I don't get that. It's got like the things that are coming out of the door. If closet. your vagina looks like the thing in the closet, go <laughs> consult your OBGYN immediately. <laughs> this should not be what a vagina looks like. No, no, it shouldn't. Diane then breaks free from the spirit or whatever that's sticking her to the ceiling and the yes. wall. And again, I love this whole scene is fantastic because she breaks free. She goes into the hallway to go to her kid's room. And then mm -hmm. you get like the skeleton dog head, like big spirit that shows up. This is another thing I don't understand. So all these things keep coming out, right? Like, ah. I'm a ghost dog. Blah. I'm a big skull. Blah. None of them are actually physically pre like they're mist. You can see yes. through them. Yes. So what are you going to do to me? Earlier in the movie, Marty, because we all know the ghosts and the spirits and shit don't like Marty. Yes. He gets like a jaws size bite in his side. So obviously the, okay, the spirits that's, that's fair. That's can fair. do that's something. Fair. So it like barks at her like a fucking dog or a wolf or whatever. She goes tumbling down the stairs. This is actually a scene where I started. It's the whole scene is fantastic, but I started mm -hmm. laughing here because she's like, fuck this. Them's my babies. I got to, I got to run upstairs. She gets shocked off the, the railing. Then she goes yeah. to the door. She gets shocked and blown across the house. <laughs> that was rough. <clears throat> I saw that one. I'm like, oh, that bitch is dead. They just killed JBW. That was crazy. Yeah. And then she runs outside and starts screaming for help. She falls into the pool. This is when, like, all the skeletons start coming up. The coffins start blasting up through the, the ground. Yes. Yeah. And the, uh, the weird neighbors from next door come out. They basically did what I would have done because they look upstairs and there's lights going crazy. And there's yeah. shit going on. And they were like, yo... We are not equipped for this. We are boning the fuck out. So Steve yes. and his boss show up. And why he, he was with his boss, the only thing I can think of is that he's trying to retain Steven, Steven because he thinks that he's going to another firm or something. Yeah, and, I don't, I don't, I don't understand way, why the boss was there. But hey, we're yeah. going to close that loop. Yep, yeah, but we put a nice big bow on this one. And this yep. is when Steve realizes that they moved all the headstones, but they never moved any of the bodies. You son of a bitch, you moved the cemetery, but you left the bodies, didn't you? Your family is trapped inside. They're screaming for you. You've attempted one time to get in there. You can't get in. You're going to go the other way. A body popped up. And you're like, a fucking body? That cemetery? Where the fuck is my boss? <laughs> like, his tone, like, do you have ADD? 
What the fuck is wrong with you? Your family I, is still trapped, and you're like, hey, boss, exposition, exposition. Why? Why? I'll, I'll agree. The only motivation for Steven here is exposition. But yes. this that interaction between him and his boss was fantastic. And it was the grab him by the lapels. Yeah. You, you didn't move the bodies like that. And then he just screams at the end of it, which is yes. awesome. <laughs> but they got, out, they got out and didn't need my help. So yeah, turns out I'm useless. <laughs> I, I like the part where he says, you know, you didn't move the bodies. Yeah. If he left it there and even included your precious screaming, fine. <laughs> totally fine with that. But he doesn't. He goes, you didn't move the bodies. You didn't move the bodies. The cemetery was here, and then you moved it up the hill. And then you took the headstones, but not the bodies. <laughs> Why didn't you move the bodies? Yelling. Yelling. It's just like, fuck, dude. I know we're stupid as audience members, but we're not that stupid. That's rough. So the family gets out after this. They pile into their family station wagon and they drive off. The house implodes through the portal as Teague and the rest of the, the neighbors look on, right? If I'm a neighbor, I'm literally, I would have been looking around like, are you motherfuckers seeing this? Am I the only, like, I might have been drinking tonight, but did the house just get sucked into a light and then just fucking yeah. disappear? This is where I would be volunteering for the Will Smith, Tommy Lee Jones memory eraser thing. <laughs> yes. Like, just zap me. I'll go back. I don't, I don't want to know whatever this is. I don't want to know that that exists. Exactly. And then the Freelings check into the hotel a nice little bit of humor here as they the the dad throws the TV out, <laughs> I did out, of, laugh at that. out of the hotel room. <laughs> did you wa – okay, so I watched, obviously, the whole movie, but I was in a conversation as as the credits were rolling. And I don't know if you watched it all the way till the end of the credits, but in the no, middle of – this isn't a Marvel movie. <laughs> but in the middle of my conversation – and I, I like to watch these movies. I got the sound bar, and it's like the volume's all the way up. Like, I want to feel like my house is haunted, too, when I'm watching these. Sure. And so the sound bar is up. It plays, like, this nice happy music at the end. And then at the end of the credits, I just literally, like, turned and looked at the TV. Like, what the fuck is going? It's just disembodied kids' voices laughing and giggling and shit. It was the creepiest thing. So, if you watch the movie, watch to the end of the credits. It's incredibly creepy. Or fucking don't. <laughs> but, all in all, beginning to end, and again, when you watch, especially with horror, because back then, horror budgets, they, they weren't large. You know, they were like, oh, you're going to make a horror movie? Uh, okay, here's 60 grand. Make it work. <laughs> like, but the effects... And I know this is a, a Spielberg joint, so they got a few more dollars than sixty grand. But the the effects were fantastic for eighty two. Oh, I know 100%. I made I know I made fun of Marty and the whole face peeling and yada yada, but for eighty two, still pretty good. Um, the story's fantastic. The yes. actors are fantastic, and again, for yes. horror movies back then. The you, you couldn't afford big time actors that actually knew what they were doing. So a lot of these movies have really shitty acting in them. Mm -hmm. This was not one of them. So like the acting was good. The script was good. The uh, the effects were good. Like it absolutely still holds up and it's action from front to back throughout this whole yeah. thing. I love this movie. Yes. 100% agree with everything you said. Uh, if you pay attention, that was the thing that impressed me the most about this movie, is if you really pay attention to Craig T. Nelson and Joe Beth Williams acting in this, like mm -hmm. the real acting that they have to do, it's phenomenal how they yep. go from normal to completely strung out when they're crying over uh, Carol Ann being missing, yep. the end, trying to get the fuck out of there. 
everything they they did in this movie was a hundred percent perfect as oh, far absolutely. as actors are concerned. Uh, absolutely. And I'm with you. Directing was great. Um, again, for a horror movie script, I really like that. It was a great script. Everybody held their own. The kids who I find normally annoying and want to choke the shit out of, they were really were good. Great. Yeah, they were great. Uh, Heather O'Rourke was fantastic. It's tragic what happened to her because she was. Yeah. I think based on what she did in the what, two and a half movies that she was yeah. in with this uh, franchise, she was on her way to being a fantastic actor. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, yeah, it was just it's a it's a great movie. Completely holds up. If you haven't seen it, the fuck are you waiting for? Just don't expect the preacher. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's what I learned. Uh, and, and that's actually what my wife said. She's like, ooh, is this the one with the preacher? I was like, no, that's two. And part two is, God, it's like, it's almost like a one and one A. Like, yeah, exactly. as far as my, as far as me liking the movies, like part two is so good. And it's one of the very yes. few horror movies that or any movie for that matter that comes out with a sequel and the sequel is just as good as the original like yes. the part two is so good um we should probably review that one too at some point but uh oh, nice. this this movie is just hands down still and it's still terrifying the whole yeah, way it's, through. It's, a, it's a good good scary movie it really yeah. is uh i'm with i like two better than this one just me, because I'm personally more afraid of the preacher than I am a ghost dog. Uh, but again, that's just me. I don't care. I even I even like the third one. I know a lot of people shit on the third one. I thought the I third like one it. was scary as shit. I like. Plus, the third you got one Tom too. Skerritt rocking. <laughs> Hell yeah, Tom Skerritt. I think Nancy <laughs> Allen. They were rocking yep. that shit. Absolutely. So anyway, yes, I love this franchise. We will absolutely review them uh, all as far as I'm concerned, but I don't have any say on this show. I'm just an employee and uh, we'll go from there. Cool. Anything else? Yeah. All right. Well, for Corey, I'm Armando. This is kiss the reviews. And this was 1982's poltergeist. Twat us on Twitter. <laughs>